It feels like just recently, Microsoft pushed everyone to upgrade to Windows 10, stating that this would be the last operating system you'll ever need. Well, they lied. Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel. Yes, Windows 11 is indeed real, it is happening, and there's plenty of people out there on the internet that have already made videos about this showing Windows 11, what it can do, and the cool features that it has. I am in fact holding Windows 11 on this thumbstick right here. No, I'm not going to show you how to install it, where to get it from, or any way to pirate it on your own. You can do exactly what I did and Google it, figure it out that way, it's very easy. If I can figure it out, you could figure it out. Microsoft is having an event on June 24th. It actually may be the same day that I put this video live, so today, where they're gonna unveil something big coming to Windows. Spoiler alert, it's Windows 11. Now, rumor has it, it's not gonna be out until October of 2021, somewhere around that time frame. So, if you're really waiting for it and you want it today, the only way you're gonna be able to do it is to find this developer's copy that I have and install it on your system just like I did. When I went into my computer's BIOS, if you wanna take a look at it with me here, the one thing that I had to do was go into my settings under security and then trusted computing is what mine was called. But you're looking for this TPM switch. I have it disabled right now, but so that even shows you all you need it for is the installation of the media. Once it's in there, I didn't need to have it re-enabled or anything. Brian from Tech Yes City showed it to me. He has a great video, which I can link below about Windows 11. And he even did a video showing how to install it as well. So if you're really interested and want to do it for yourself, you can go check out his video. I'll leave a link in the description below. But he was the one that let me know that you have to have a TPM 2.0 module, which this motherboard that I have does. This is the MSI B550M mortar Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to this entire setup that I'm running here down in the description as well if you want to check it out. But once I enabled that, I was able to install it just like a normal Windows 10 install. It was super easy. I just pop my thumb drive in and follow the on-screen prompts. So now that I have your attention, let's check out what Windows 11 actually looks like. To get it out here right at the beginning to you, I'll be honest, I think Windows 11 feels like a reskinned Windows 10. The operating system itself runs basically the same. It's actually very smooth, very streamlined. And I, for any of you that jumped from Windows 7 to Windows 8 to Windows 10, or from either of those two to Windows 10, when 10 came out, it had a lot of bugs. It had all kinds of driver issues, things were not communicating properly. Uh, programs wouldn't open. This is not the case for this. If I could be all honest about it, it feels like Windows 10 just reskinned. Right away, the taskbar is the first thing that I noticed. It's right in the middle. Everything looks very Mac OS ish. They have a lot of new animations when it comes to opening things. You can see the file explorer, the edges are rounded now instead of a squared off look. It, it's like this with everything. For the taskbar, you can move it back over to the side. All you have to do is right click on your taskbar, hit taskbar settings, and then at the top here, you can choose left or center. See if you select left, it just throws everything over to the left here. So it's very traditional. You don't have to change anything if you don't want to. Now, I think this is a slimmed down version of Windows 10 actually, because everything is super responsive. It is very uh, easy to use. So it feels like Windows 10, but when I open things, if I'm doing any kind of file transfers, everything is very snappy. I mean, it doesn't wait, it doesn't hang up on things, but like I said, it's slimmed down. There's not a lot of background processes. There's not a lot happening. I like the way they do their themes. If you go into Windows 10 right now, the themes are very uh, generic and there's not a whole lot of choices for them. They offered light and dark modes in Windows 10, but now in Windows 11, you've got the selection to be able to modify, you know, the colors and everything with the theme. So Windows kind of threw that in and you can get more themes in the Microsoft Store. Being able to choose, and look at how snappy this is. Like everything is very instant, very quick, and I'm not running on the highest end hardware but I'll talk about that in a second. Another cool feature about this is all the multitasking. All these snapping functions were not available on Windows 10, not from what I saw on my copies. So one of the new things that you can do, if I have the settings open, if you highlight the maximize button on the corner here, 
you can actually select where you want everything to go before you even, you don't have to drag anything. So you just click that in the corner, then you're gonna click here and it's gonna throw it on that third section and then down in the bottom corner here. Another neat thing that they've thrown in there is um, title bar window shake is what they call it. All you do is grab the window, shake it around and all the other windows will shrink. And then that's your only window up on your screen. Everything's still in the same place that it was for Windows 10. So it really isn't much different except for the taskbar. If you don't want the taskbar, like I said, you slide it over to the left-hand side. It feels just like Windows 10, just a more plush and flashy looking design of it. Like I showed you on File Explorer, when you open that up, there's new icons and stuff. They've got nice colors and it's like a Pascal kind of kind of design, but they did that for everything here. One of the coolest things that I thought was really neat, and that's this is why I say that it's kind of like Windows 10, everything just worked. I didn't have to fight with drivers or anything like that. I went into update and security, I checked for Windows updates, and it downloaded everything. It downloaded AMD's drivers, because I'm running an AMD processor with integrated Radeon graphics. It found all of the drivers for my mouse and keyboard, any peripherals I had installed. It was just, there. Another thing that I really liked is the CD keys on this will work with Windows 11 from Windows 10. So all I did is went into my activation. See, I got a Windows 11 Pro license. Look at that. I thought that was really cool. I used a Windows 10 key, typed it in here, and it activated Windows 11 the exact same way as Windows 10. So that's what's making me think that Windows 11 is going to be free for everyone to upgrade to. If you currently have Windows 10, or even Windows 8, if you're hanging on for dear life, you can upgrade to Windows 11 probably, most likely for free. Don't quote me on it, but from what I've seen, uh, it works the exact same way as Windows 10. And if you need a single end user license for Windows 10, either pro or home, you can swing over to scdkey.com where they have single end user licenses for Windows 10, and you can use my affiliate link in the description below. Now, we do earn a small commission for the channel, but hey, it keeps the lights on. One thing I thought was interesting is that it uses, Windows 11 uses hardware acceleration to be able to produce all of their cool window animations and stuff like that. Because before I installed the drivers for AMD's graphics, it didn't have any of the cool flashy functions as far as like when you open the window, you can throw it up at the top here and it makes the expansion like that. Zoom functions, when you minimize, it shrinks down into the bottom tray there. None of that was working until I got my video driver done. So you're probably thinking, which is what I was thinking, what kind of hardware do I need to be able to run Windows 11? Well, I can't speak for everything, but I did decide to slim this thing down as much as I possibly can. So let's talk about this hardware right now. The cheapest parts, the most simple parts I had on hand, I threw into this computer. This is AMD, this is a Ryzen 5 3400G. It's four cores and eight threads. And then it is a MSI B550M mortar Wi-Fi motherboard. It's running on the latest BIOS update from MSI's website. And then for the gaming testing, I had 16 gigabytes of G-Skills Trident Z RAM in here at 3200 megahertz. I wanted to see if I slimmed the computer down as much as possible, if it could still run Windows 11 with no hiccups. So what I did is pulled one of the sticks of RAM out. So right now it's running eight gigs of RAM at 2133. When I was doing the testing as far as running everything on the computer, I had four browser tabs, two launchers, the task manager, file explorer, and I think I had two other things open, Cinebench, and I was running heaven in the background. And I was impressed that I could game on the lowest end hardware on the newest operating system with no issues. Actually, let's take a look at gaming. So I only did three different tests because I really didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on it, especially with these kind of results. And I, I was very interested to see how this turned out. I ran Unigen Heaven and it got 69 FPS. Well, with Windows 11, it got 68.6. And that's within variance, obviously, run to run variance. Really, it got the exact same FPS, whether I was on 10 or 11, it didn't matter. I ran Rainbow Six Siege, just the built-in benchmark. I got 71 FPS on both Windows 10 and Windows 11. And then finally, I played Apex Legends. This one does not have a built-in benchmark, so I just had to drop in and kind of run around on the same path every time. I got 51.2 FPS on Windows 10, and I got 48.8 on Windows 11. So a little bit lower, but... Like I said, it could be variance. It's not a consistent benchmark, 
but honestly, oh, and all those settings were the lowest possible settings because this is an APU and it's got built-in graphics. There is no graphics card in this. The CPU is the graphics card. But there you have it, Windows 11. It's actually pretty polished for a new operating system. But like I said, it's really just a reskin of Windows 10 with new flashy design. And But honestly, if it's free and they push it out there for anybody to install, I'll download it. I mean, look, I downloaded the bootleg copy. But what about you? Would you install Windows 11 on your computer? Do you want Windows 11? Or are you going to try to find it on the internet like I did? Let me know down in the comments. I love reading those types of things and hearing your responses to stuff like that. So all in all, I'm pretty impressed with it. I'm really glad that I was able to snag this copy before Microsoft took it off the internet. But thanks for stopping and checking it out. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next video.